Okay. I'm still feeling iffy, so um, so bear bear with me. Um, so I got all these text messages from my mom. I'm trying to hide from you guys. Let's see. Here. Share. My mom. My mom loves me very much. That was the gist of it. <laughs> the gist. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Yep. Yeah. I get a weird green line. Is this uh, pulling? Is this pulling out of the visible area or no? Nope. No. Okay. Weird. And you guys can't see this green line going across my screen. We can just see your whole screen desktop and background and everything. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll leave it there. Um, it's funny when you're not feeling well, your motor skills are not quite what they, they usually are. Okay, so I kind of stuck. I have a few things I, I want to leave you guys with. Um, I have a few things I want to leave you with that I'm still working on. Uh, officially, my last day is tomorrow. I'll work on some of that then. But um, but I'm, I'm yeah. I'm, there's one extra thing I'd like to get in at least, at least this weekend. So I think it'll help a lot with um, with people moving forward with this. Um, I kind of stuck to the to the format that you suggested, Molly. I thought that helped organize my thoughts and. You know, this, it's kind of a big topic, so I, I feel like there's going to be a lot of questions, and um, and not all of it's going to be totally relevant. Um, um, it should follow up in like in issues and stuff like that. So um, so feel free to you know post those questions and, and to me directly, and we can kind of talk about them here. Um, the why improving provider strategies is important. I felt so some of this I felt like oh it's obvious we've all been working on it, but I'm just going to write down at least what my mindset has been for the you know for however little bit of time I've been, I've been working on it, but kind of, um, and I think this pretty much drives with everyone's understanding, which is that our current scheme of breaking up all of our content into 256K blocks, then announcing each of those blocks to the rest of the network presents a large burden for announcing and discovering, uh, regardless of what we, like the performance of the DHT, regardless of how we like implement the underlying mechanism and all of that, it just seems like our, we have really ambitious goals for the amount of content that we wanna have uh, in IPFS and therefore, uh, announcing at that granularity, I just, it seems like any to any solution we come up with um, as the underlying mechanism is going to suffer from the same problem, which is just, we're going to flood, we're going to flood the network with announcements and we want to avoid that. I think even if it could support it, it would be worthwhile to avoid it if, if we can, because it just frees up, you know, there's an opportunity cost there. Michael, do you want to maybe just command shift equals or command plus a little bit just for posterity oh, yes. of the video? Yes, yes, please. Yeah. Perfect. That, Thank you yeah. so much. That's great. Yeah, sorry about that. Works works on my machine. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll adjust. Um, <clears throat> okay. So current state of the provider strategies in Go IPFS. I wish this wasn't such a, like a complicated thing. It seems relatively straightforward. Um, I think for the right people, it probably is. I thought the best way to kind of give the current state is to go into it kind of how the work developed. It's not it's not that long, so I, I we're not going to go into it in tickers of detail. But I wanted to at least um, cover up cover some of the highlights. Um, uh, so there's a, there exists there is an, currently an experimental providing system um, that I've been working on. The hope is that eventually it's going to replace the current providing system and go IPFS. Uh, the current system is like hardly a system at all. Um, there's just uh, some workers in go IPFS, and there's some code that routes new blocks to these workers, and these workers announce without any context whatever blocks that they come into contact to, and it basically kills our the ability for us to have flexible providing the kind of providing we sort of like not bike shed but the 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 sort of providing we really go into into detail over requires us to have structural knowledge of some kind of the um, 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 of the things that we're of the things that we're providing uh, the goal of the new system is to is to essentially yank that responsibility from um, from bitswap and put it into IPFS and then uh, and then from there, we, in theory, have more control. If we're gonna do an add, 
we you know we have the we have the root node we can do the add and then we could do some stuff using like the, the dag service to determine structure and crawling and that kind of thing to, to determine what to provide later so the, so the overall goal was shift bit swap into um into go ipfs any at any point please chime in with corrections or or questions or anything um, so this work went through some stages when i first started admittedly i didn't know anything about IPFS and this sort of distributed stuff. So there was some, I got pointed in some directions and there was some time spent just figuring out what the ask, um, what the ask was. So there were some stages at the beginning where there just were, there were a couple of failures and, um, and restarts, uh, which we were pretty vocal, like vocal about getting feedback on. That's where those first handful of RFCs um, came from. So the ori original Trepid, the original Epic tracking issue, excuse me, Okay, you guys here a little bit. Um, so this here is an issue that was started way back in November, um, way back in November, and that and it kind of detailed the plan at the time. And the plan at the time made sense to me, <clears throat> um, and evolved in such a way that it we just ran into some blockers. So okay, so I'll kind of go through over what the, what the plan, well, we're not gonna go into too much detail because a lot of this changed, but we'll talk about some of the complications. Um, so basically we were like, let's remove posts, let's remove bit swap from provide, provide, and we'll add the equivalent bit swap, I mean, I'm sorry, the equivalent provide into IPFS. That ended up being, it's just a much bigger challenge than, um, than it seems at first glance because bit swap has this, has a, it's a very simple mechanism where all blocks that you come into contact with will be provided. And once you remove that, you now have to go through the entire system and figure out what actions result in what blocks, what do we want to you know, do about that and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, and in doing, in starting to figure out that work, um, in starting to figure out that, um, I'll, I'll go over that in a minute. Um, so our goal, yeah, introduce a provider and provide all strategy, use them post ad. That was kind of the like, hey, this should cover our, our main um, our main use case. Um, then we'll make the provider um, more robust. The idea here was like, hey, like it'll provide as quickly as BitSwap, BitSwap or whatever other little things that we use that we've learned along the way that it was um, um, that it was going to do. We deferred this actually um, because. We just deferred bringing the provider and the reprovider in line because it was yet a bigger change that was going to block any any of these smaller things from going from going through. So the idea was that we had some ideas for how we could do. Okay, let's. There's a smaller thing we could do, and we can attack. We can tackle the reprovider next. The next thing was basically like let's just detail all the places that we need to go through and figure out where um, where provide calls didn't exist that they need to now. This list was, it's not exhaustive, unfortunately. Um, though I was trying to be at the time, I've since learned of a few of a few places and I've, I've documented those um, elsewhere. But you can see on all these check boxes, that's because some of this work was done. So that was kind of, there's a sort of pattern here for the providing work where we kind of go, we went deep down a path. We probably went the deepest down the first path and implemented a bunch of stuff. And then we learned, we just can't merge all of this at once. There's too many cases, there's just too much going on. And we had to backpedal basically. So a lot of the work that still needs to be done in like the newer branches is actually done to some extent, or at least has prior art in other branches. And so um, I'll, I'll retouch on that when we go over the, the sort of list of things where they are now. But, um, but yeah, anywhere you see a check, box here you you can jump to APR you usually the one listed um, listed here and see some code dealing with that there were places we've there were there was kind of a lot of things or that's not quite fair there were a, a couple of things shifting around as we were doing this work um, core API was one of those things um, just you know it was a necessity like have to upgrade all those things and because of that um, some of these things were in a core API and ready to be modified in this way for providing and some of them were not and in the cases that they were not at the time um i i put a note in just hey deal with this when the time comes you'll see uh, like we're we're still trying to get to the time of integrating the rest of these things back back in um and each of these things like 
I feel, uh, I feel somewhat embarrassed to say this, but they took a long time to find and verify. <laughs> like finding each of these things, a lot of the times was easy. Setting up the data, figuring out to how to get IPFS to do a thing so that I can confirm that a provide was previously happening and wasn't happening when we removed the bit swap provide and would happen again in with, if we added this other provide. It was just a time consuming process. So I think that that's a thing for anyone that picks it up. You just kind of have to, unless you kind of have to go through each of these things and handle them case by case, set it up. You know, the tests are going to tell you to some extent if it works, but actually verifying that the provides happen. Um, takes a little time and they were split up basically into additions and modifications. These are things that you're doing to your own repo with content that doesn't exist in the IPFS network yet or presumably doesn't exist in the IPFS network yet or at least not as far as you're concerned. Um, and then there were also a, a number of things that you have to go through for when you're retrieving. If you LS, should you provide all those things? Previously, that's how IPFS worked. You know, any any new blocks that came into contact, even if they were basically ephemeral where we're going to be, um, we're going to be announced. And, um, and so there was like questions around that kind of stuff, conversations and, 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 and whatnot there. Um, but I think the, the, the marching orders were like, let's, let's make it work the way, the way it worked before for the most part, minus these, you know, these things that we obviously want to tweak. Is this registering? This makes sense so far. I have a question. Actually. Um, could you talk about why uh, why you need the, to touch the read part of the code for provide? Because if you do an IPFS LS and you don't have the and you're LSing something that you actually don't have in your own repository, it first gets brought in. Um, and in the way that it worked before, any new a bit swap just aggressively was like, "Hey, new block." I'll like prov I'll announce that I that this block exists in order to be in order to be um, provided. It's like it's any there, go, what's up? Uh, Dirk oh. first. Dirk is that is that a does that give it give an answer? Adin. So what did you mean by like ephemeral blocks? Uh, that was probably sloppy usage on my part. I just meant that like blocks that you're not pinning effectively. Like block, blocks that are going to come and go. Like you're gonna you're gonna do an IPFS get for something that you want. You're gonna provide it for the duration that you have it, and then obviously you're not. That that's just the way it worked before. There was a lot of like hey, maybe it doesn't work that way, but I, I think those changing that stuff was even more of a change in a way that we were like, uh, let's like keep it at least the way people expect it to behave for the moment, and then and then we can talk about like sort of differences in, in expectations. Answer? I, yeah. Oh, I was gonna just back up and say like, yeah, like the example of like LSing Wikipedia and inadvertently providing Wikipedia in that process, it seems like if you're LSing Wikipedia, you may or may not actually be wanting to store and provide the entire thing. The solution is to LS offline. No, I'm kidding, you yeah. can't do that. <laughs> that doesn't work. Um, You'd have to start it with like content routing off or your, yeah, anyway. Yeah. yeah, no, that's exactly right. There's like, it goes, it, it goes both ways. Like there, there are things obviously where you don't want to do providing and there's things where you do want to do providing. We, we don't have that flexibility. So you'll see later, I'll, I'll get into it. I'll get into, um, I'll get into a sort of a, a, the list of things that I've been maintaining lately, which is that the reality is that the providing strategy, we, we have opinions within IPFS. This is just me speaking, obviously, whatever. But this is my understanding of like what, what people would like is that within IPFS, we have opinions about how things should be provided that can always be overridden. And that part we don't, we don't have basically any of that other than provide everything at the moment. So we may have like, if you, you can set a global provide strategy um, that's just like one word, you know, none, all roots. This is just a hypothetical. Um, and, th and that provide strategy will actually affect the way things get provided in different places. So like if you do a, a group provide, I don't know if there's a technical term where you're providing a, a, a tree, you know, like an ad or like a pin ad or something like, or, um, or something like that. And you have like a root strategy enabled, 
it's going to provide just the root of that thing, but it's also going to provide like if you do a DAG put or if you do what, you know, whatever those, whatever those other things are. But then when you're doing an IPFS add or an IPFS LS and you know, you're LSing Wikipedia in that command, you should be able to say, you know, that whatever dash dash provide strategy equals none or something to that effect. Um, so it's just like the overall flexibility of deciding when and how things are provided is, is we have opinions about it that get people, you know, enough of the way. And then we have options for them to like get themselves a bit, a bit further figuring all this out. I mean, it's, it seems obvious. Maybe it was already always obvious to everyone from the beginning, but just getting all of these things in line and okay, this is the thing. This is the thing. Um, um, just takes time. Just takes, takes time. Any other questions before I move on? I take silence as no. Okay. There's um, another component um, that we just simply never got to, which was the uh, change finding, change find. When we, when I say we, I mean me. And I, I blame the team a little bit in that. <laughs> So we so changing the find providers account for some CIDs not being provided um, is the thing we never got to. This is backtracking. This relies on metadata. There's just like a lot of pieces, um, and at, it seemed to me at the time, at least there were groups um, um, groups taking some responsibility for this. I th think I learned later that actually different people were different taking responsibility for different parts of metadata. Um, um, and this was probably something that just someone could could start um, could start could start tackling. Uh, and I think that G, there's metadata needed for GC. That's the first time that that was the first that was the first meeting where I was like, oh, if uh, someone suggested I add metadata for GC, and that could also be used for for providing. So I think that that that's a thing to keep um to keep in mind. Um. Uh, yeah. So once we once we're not providing all of the the blocks, we have this, we just have this problem of, you know, if you, if you start providing a thing and, and it stops, you know, you get cut off in the middle, either you have to, uh, if you start, I'm sorry, if you start retrieving a thing um, and, and it gets cut off in the middle, you either have to retrieve from the beginning or we have to have a system in place that lets you start over from like a more, a more uh, convenient location in the, in the tree. Um, that's the providing strategy. That's like the real heart of the providing strategy work. Um, and there's a few people working on a few different things. I think the, in terms of the strategies themselves and what they could be and what the most like more advanced options are, um, Kuba has a lot of information on that. He was doing, I, I don't have access to them. I don't know of them being documented anywhere online, but I, you know, we all sat next to each other and he was showing us these like probabilistic models given, um, given um, IPFS repos that we actually had at the time. So, um, so yeah, it's something I would, I would definitely uh, look into as well. Um, so yeah, and then this was kind of done in stages. Let's do like a, a simpler, a simpler um, strategy that accounts for this and then we'll introduce the more, oh yeah, and then there's a note here that actually like Kuba has some research going on. Um, and then the other thing was that the reprovider and the pro the providing system and the reprovider are like they do the same things, but they're different. You know, they just work differently. Uh, provider provides everything by default. The reprovider does reprovide everything, but it gives you the option to like uh, uh, reprovide roots or you know that that kind of um, that kind of thing. I don't know really. I'm not sure what a lot of the people I came into contact with um, assumed or a lot, a few of the people I came into contact with, I got the impression that they didn't realize that they were actually announcing every individual block. They were like, I have a thousand files. I'm doing a thousand, 1000 announcements. Um, and like the getting them to think like, no, you're, you're doing like way more than that based on the size <coughs> of those, of those, um, of those files was kind of, um, yeah, it was just a thing. That I, that I didn't, I didn't expect to encounter, but, but did. Okay. So I'd like to, this is just the first thing, the very first open thing. Uh, I'm going to do my best to, there's some, I have a list of to do's in the, in this like new Epic for tracking. And what I'd like to do is almost all of them have prior art from previous PRs that I did that did the work in some form or another, but we had to abandon for 
one reason or another, I'm going to like link those things so that you don't have to go searching for them yourselves. Um, uh, but there is a lot of content. There's just a lot of discussion and stuff that happened in these, in some of these issues and PRs. Um, okay. So that was the or original epic tracking issue. That was for me. Now you can find issues on this exact same line of work from like 2015. There were like several, there were like several attempts and my very first attempt was actually based off of the, the last, the last attempt. I think the, um, and the, an interesting learning moment in that situation was that 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 attempt actually failed, but it wasn't communicated anywhere in the PR. It was just people were pointing to it as the like in flight work that was never finished. Um, uh, and it just took a while to find out why, you know, why that why that approach wasn't the wasn't the right approach. Um, I don't have it marked out in here, but I'll I'll go back. Um, I'll go back before tomorrow and make um, make a note of that. I don't think anyone's going to run into it, but just make a note, like make a note of that. Um, so the first, interrupt me at any time. I apologize. I'm kind of like rolling rolling through it. Um, the first introduction of the new provider system that actually made it into IPFS um, kind of occurred by accident. So due to some changes that were made in BitSwap, I think Hannah's on the line. She might have more information to correct this, but we got into a situation where um, the gateways were taking a long time to provide routes and there was a change that caused that to happen that we didn't expect. And so there was some urgency to, to be able to provide routes um, more quickly. I had already, I already had this other system that would uh, side by side provide routes, um, uh, provide routes for, um, you know, alongside pin, excuse me, pin and ad calls. Um, and so we cleaned it up and we, and we merged it and that became the sort of like the first, um, the first, uh, the first version of this. Um, and if anyone thinks walking through this is not the most useful thing to do, uh, please let me know. But I thought, I thought like understanding how things got to the, where they are would be good for people that want to move it, move it forward. Um, so yeah, this, this PR just introduces, a, it's very simple. It introduces a provider that just does an ad and a, and a pin ad. The reason why I was so excited is because I had been working on this system for a long time and had nothing merged in because it was, there was just, it was too big of a change to make wholesale. This gave us an opportunity to get some of the code in and figure out things like, how does this get, you know, how do we construct the node? You know, how do we construct the provider along with the node? Like what are all the necessary dependencies and, and how does it fit, you know, fit in with the, architecture that's eventually going to be merged because when you're doing PRs, you know, like you get it to work, but then everyone gets their eyes on it and it's like, Oh no, you should do this. And there's this, you know, there's actually this thing that we do that, you know, maybe no one called out to you. So you should do that. So I was, we were really excited to get a lot of those answers so that when we were doing move for move, when we were doing work moving forward, we just had them like, you know, we can kind of work, work from them. Anyway, this gets merged. Um, I won't go through the, I won't go through it line by line or anything, but you could see there's basically a few places like in, uh, uh, in core where we're, we're running the provider, we basically construct this provider, uh, type, um, and we run it in a few locations. So we do a provide and pin and we do a provide and add, um, you know, there's a, there's a few things, but then the provider itself, um, is relatively simple. You, it's this type here. Um, you can construct it. It requires uh, a content router, as can be expected. Um, when you the the big di not the big difference, but a difference is that the um, the reprovider system in BitSwap, for which the mo the provider system was modeled after, it just had an in memory like unbuffered queue of things that it was eventually going to provide. We moved that to disk, so we actually have a queue in the data store that we work from, and this was the this was the first int introduction of that of that queue as well. Um, Michael, which, yes. Just a quick thing, you said the reprovide system in Bitswap. I think you mean the provide system in Bitswap. I mean the reprovide system in IPFS. Sorry. Oh, Sorry. So, okay. IP. I, I, I may have misspoke. So, IPFS had a reprovider that would occasionally reprovide things, and it. Uh, it did a similar thing to what we wanted the provider system to do. It just did it. We, the structure of it was the same. The details were a lot different. Um, 
Okay, and we, we just have some, I mean, pretty standard stuff. We have some workers that go through and either, you know, on queue or DQ. I mean, I'm sorry, um, announce things as they're coming off of the queue. Um, okay, we have some tests for this stuff. Uh, the queue code, it changes a little bit, so I'm not really gonna go into detail on this PR because we, we actually made the queue, we actually made the queue simpler, so all that code kind of goes away. Um, okay, sorry, back to, back to this stuff here. Just a quick question. Uh, does that mean that those uh, hashes are getting provided twice, once by IPFS and once by Bitswap? The roots, that's correct, yeah. Just the roots. They're, the roots are provided, so the problem is that Bitswap provides the roots last, and we needed to provide them first. This was like the lowest cost way to ensure that roots are provided quickly. It doesn't even guarantee that they're provided first because they're provided alongside, you know, they're just provided right away. Uh, but it does mean in the grand scheme of things right now, it's if you're doing a very, like if you're doing a bunch of one, um, uh, like one, block additions your provide times are going to be maybe double uh they're happening in parallel so they're not you know what i mean it's not quite it's not quite double but you know you could you could spend a little extra time there um, but on the large i think that the that that extra one is the the important thing is that that will go away and then the only thing that will actually be doing the providing is the provider system and one of the things that one of the things I have a note for here, and I have a bunch of code written for, and I'm trying, I'm hoping to at least have, a, I will have at least a PR up for you guys to take, merge, modify, whatever. That just introduces priority to the queue, and the whole purpose of that is to preserve this other behavior. So, like you'll add, you'll add all of your nodes. You'll just add your root with the with the higher priority, and it'll get. Yeah, it'll get handled first, but yeah. So it's kind of like a not the greatest solution at the in the moment, but we know that there's a there's just another solution coming sooner. Any other questions before I move on? Cool. Thanks, I appreciate it. Um, uh, so the eventually it became. I'm trying not to like read from script, but I wanted to like have some coherence to this. So eventually it became clear that like the provider system's biggest challenge was that it was an all or nothing change. Like you can't, you can't do a little. You can't like remove providing and add a little bit of it back in. That doesn't really work. Um, it's just too core to the system. And so we spun our wheels a lot. A lot of bike shedding. A lot of PR like going over and, and without resolution because we were trying to handle like rewriting providing from the ground up um, and it was incredibly stressful and someone I think it was I think it was Steven was like oh let's just release it under a, a feature flag uh, which hadn't dawned on me and um, and admittedly it's like if that that could have been a nice thing I, I think any large sort of changed IPFS is worthwhile to start off as a, <laughs> as a feature flag. Cause under that feature flag, all of the things that were causing us to, to spend a bunch of time having to think about, we could, we could dispense with basically until the time was right. Um, and so that's what we were trying to do that. We started doing that just a little bit before, um, just a little bit before team week, um, which was working out good. So, um, so we just decided to release the work. Um, from there, we got uh, we got something merged pretty quickly. Um, uh, okay, so this was the first strategic provider that that was merged, and admittedly, it's the least impressive because it literally doesn't do anything. But that was also a feature because before there was no time before this PR. Maybe there was, and I just don't know about it. I never heard anything about it. People were asking for it, but there was no way to run IPFS without providing, without turning off content routing. So, if you wanted to run IPFS, if you wanted to add stuff, you could do it offline. But if you wanted to run a node like Gateway did, and you don't want to do provides, there was no way to configure IPFS to do that. That's why I chose this as like the smallest step. Like we can get this thing in, get it in quickly, and actually get some feedback from Gateway on whether or not it was working. Um, um, unfortunately, that was for Aaron, and and 
um, Aaron left and we kind of lost getting that thing merged though. I know, though I heard, um, I heard during team week that, um, that Michael, um, wanted to, wanted to pick that, pick that up. So I'm, I'm hoping that's something that they've taken a look at. And, and I've seen in some issues in PRs that, um, there's been some mention of it. Um, Okay, and this really gets the, this does a few things. It introduces, again, I don't want to go over a bunch of the code uh, because the code you guys can obviously read um, at a later date, but I'll try, I want to try to give some like, anecdotes about, about what's going on here. Um, the, the sort of tricky thing that we have now at this point is that we have, um, bear with me, ask questions here because this will get a tiny bit confusing. We have the so we have go ipfs before we made any changes which has the reprovider system that's in go ipfs and it has the provider system that's in that's in bitswap we as part of a change that happened we needed to introduce the provide a new provider system in ipfs next to next to bitswap and that provider system is the provider system that we're working on. It's just a very minimal, simplified version of that system. Um, when the problem is that when we introduce the new strategic system and we're doing it piece by piece, we actually have to leave these other, these other systems intact and, um, and we don't want to mess with them because they're serving a purpose. The old provider system is providing roots when it needs to. If that went away, people would notice right away. And we're going to be doing a lot of heavy development on the new provider, the new provider system. My, my inclination was just to have a duplicate, like move the old provider system into the next to the old reprovider system. And then basically cut that as like that thing's going to get deprecated eventually and just duplicated effectively into the new system that we then turn on. My motivation there was just that I didn't want regressions. And although it's a little bit of duplication, it's, it's not a lot. And, and the end goal is to deprecate it. Like the whole thing that I'm marching towards with, was deprecating it. Um, so yeah, that's one thing that may look a little funky in the PR PRs that I try to get up today and tomorrow. Um, is that there's a duplicated provider. I want you to understand why it's there. It's there so that it's there so that we don't break the existing system, which relies on it and not, and I don't really want to spend time like flexing, making it work in both situations. And I'm not sure if anyone can relate to this, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's, that was the goal there. Um, Beyond that, we introduced the um, the experimental flag. It's called strategic providing. So if that's true, you're using the strategic provider, which means you're not doing any providing at all, which for some people, that's exactly what they want. Um, if you have that uh, false, then you're just using the old provider system. That's simple. Okay. Uh, moving on. Where did I... Does the false interact with the, I saw there was like a, a Boolean and like basically do I use the old bits, like provider in, bit, in BitSwap? Mm, yeah. Are those things, are those things the same as like, am I using strategic providers or the BitSwap one or is it? Yeah. Like when you look oh. at the, when you look at the configuration code, it's like the BitSwap provide enabled is equal to strategic providing enabled false. Yeah. Okay. So there, there is like a direct correlation there. Um, and that was only made for that purpose. I, I think in the same vein, that all goes away. I don't think anyone wants BitSwap doing the providing. I think it's just an artifact. So this comes up a little bit in, in MFS, which is I spent a little bit of time looking at, and there's some special considerations, which I'll get to. Okay. Um, so the plan, so given that we have the experimental flag and we have, we have basically a provider that's in IPFS and IPFS provides nothing. It's like a blank, blank slate. Let's lay, my thought was like, let's layer on the providing from here. And rather than going all the way to the end, what I did is I sought out people who needed specific things from providing. And I tried to order them based on basically like the stepping stones to having everything. Gateway wanted to provide nothing. That was like the, that was the first step. 
uh, cluster at the time, they mentioned that they could get away with providing just roots. Uh, later on, they were like, we could get away with providing nothing really. But in theory, the provide roots is for cluster. Um, and then it's like provide all is like default IPFS use case and then provide fancy for some definition of fancy that in whatever scenario people come up, come up with, I have a feeling these strategies um, can get very specific. Uh, and I think that's some of that's going to come up when we do, um, when you get into the package management stuff. Um, the PR They're way more completed, but will never get merged, if that makes any sense. They just have way more stuff in them. So a lot of the things that are in the to-dos at the bottom of this page that are like, hey, like there's still some stuff to do, you can literally go find an example and work work from there. It's not that it's not done at all. It's just in all of the like re revisions that have been made, it's it those things haven't made it made it back in yet. Um Okay, um, yeah, so given this new flexibility, I was curious if others needed. Um, that's where this discussion came up. I was hoping for more, I was hoping for more participation in this. I think this is something that people can, um, people can pick up, but the goal of this discussion was like, hey, I know of some, like I know of some strategies that we've discussed. We've discussed all, we've discussed roots we've discussed like whole or recursive or just pin roots just pin recursive some probabilistic thing that's that's not defined yet nothing and then all the other strategies that the specific users have in mind um so i wanted to get two things from this discussion what are all the things that we know people are interested in whether or not we're going to actually make those things just so we have an idea of like what the landscape of these strategies are um, and then, and then number two, what do we have to support initially? Like for this to be a success from our side, um, as an initial launch, not as like a long-term feature, what is that, what does that look like? And I, and I kind of gave what I thought it looked like, which was the ability to provide everything, which is what is the default behavior, the ability to disable providing without disabling content routing and the ability to provide only routes during bulk provide operations like add and pin. Cause those are, I think add doing bulk ads is where we get a lot of the complaints about not being able to add things um, or not being able to retrieve things once they've added because they're in the process of, they're in the process of being provided. Um, so yes, yeah, so that I think uh, there's some discussion here. Um, it's not all completely relevant. Some of it's more relevant than others. And I, I think picking up the torch and kind of having that, that more of that conversation would be good. Okay. So then we get to more recently, towards the beginning of June, um, Cluster asked for a simple version of the provider system to be extracted so that it could be used in IPFS Lite. This is something that they offered to do on their own, but I literally had like two or three versions of things because of things that were going on. And I, and I was like, let me just do it and get it done for you real quick. That way I, my world still makes sense when I need to come back and make all these changes in other places. Um, that request resulted in the extraction of the provider system to go IPFS provider. I have a link there. This was just before team week in Barcelona. Sorry, I'm just seeing the chats. Thanks Raul, you have a wonderful day. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, sorry about that. My obligatory Octobox window for uh, for Andrew, I knew he was going to be in this meeting. So, uh, <laughs> um, let's see here. So, uh, yeah, that got extracted. That was just before Team Week in Barcelona. Um, a couple of weeks before Team Week, maybe even more than that, maybe even a month, month and a half, um, content routing was just not working effectively. And um, I was, I was talking with people in the community trying to get providing issues figured out and all of the providing issues were content routing issues and no one was working on content routing that I can get an answer to. And I was asking people like Steven. Um, and so I started working on that myself though. I had little experience in it. Just, it seemed like no point building the thing I'm building. If no one's going to be able to, no one's going to be able to use that. Um, so I started looking into that and let people know. I let Steven and everyone know that I was doing that. Um, 
the um the um eventually i figured out that there was some overlap like a team had formed and there was some literally like actually i was like talking about a thing i was i think a dean you and i were talking about it a couple mornings during team week and then i learned later oh there's like other people looking at this same issue and so i kind of jumped in that room and, and tried somewhat successfully to to help to help out um and some of that ended up being related to um the providing system in so much as it it related to um as it related to content, content routing, which the providing system is built directly on top of. Um, there was also a request during that time, Jeremy was like, hey, let's just, let's just, uh, let's just provide routes. Um, and who cares about backtracking? That's not, I'm like paraphrasing in my own, in my own words. Um, and this was, this was to, to um, deal with some stuff for Team Week. Um, and so I put up a PR that uh, did that. It's it's not something I would merge into like mainline um, into the mainline code base, but for a sort of spot, you know, uh, for a sort of spot fix, um, it could have it could have worked, and it gives an idea of how those types of changes would be made. My I have two changes. I have well, I have two changes: the prioritized queue and the uh, the provide routes that are like I I'm gonna get those PRs. Uh, I'm gonna get those PRs up before I go away and they'll, they'll give much more of an idea of like how the thing is should be um, could be expanded on obviously it's, it's your guys's system so feel free to do what you want with it um okay uh this is the discussion sorry i realize i'm starting to go quick trying to make uh trying to make time and leave time for questions and everything um yeah also notably uh, the 421 i believe release team week and the provider extraction they all happen they all happened at the same time so there was a point where it was like we were doing hot fixes in in one system and we were having to like go back and and the actual extraction didn't get merged until until kind of a little ways later and that's the explanation for that we just we had team week we had things come up and we were doing things in both of those and also trying to like migrate those, those new finds into this new system before we actually like merged that new, that new system. Um, and then, yeah, provide routes, provide prioritize queue. These are two things I've had in process for a little bit. Um, and provide all is something I'd really, because there's prior art and provide all sort of takes a different, um, has a different requirement. Um, it, I'd like to get at least a rough example of that up so that you guys so that you guys have it. Um, okay, anything else before I move on? I'm gonna try to get to these pretty quick. I realize I'm I'm stretching you guys' time a little bit. No? Okay, recent work done and relevant outcomes. I think there's more here. Um, but I'll I'll update this and let let's we can go through this. So the, the obvious thing is that a limited providing mechanism was introduced into GoIPFS, um, and the option of disabling has been added to the Go Bits Swap code base. I think those are two kind of like when we first came, when I first came to the project, and they were like, we need to have providing strategies, and then learning that it was all sort of like baked in. These two things are really important for just being able to to do the more creative strategy work. Um, so that's where that is. The, uh, there is a component of this, which is, there's a UX component of this that is not, it's not entirely obvious how it should be written down, communicated. Um, I, I, I struggled this with this in PRs talking back and forth with, with like Steven, for example. Um, this is where I landed as a thing that would kind of make sense to me, but there's, eh, I can, there's like some ambiguity. There's room for people to read their own meaning, it, meaning into these things. So uh, either refining them or just making it extra clear. But here's the actual configuration of the providing strategies is this is kind of what I, what I landed on is an, at least an initial version, which is that you have in your config a provider section that has a strategy, a strategy option. That strategy, the obvious ones are like none, roots, all, and then whatever other strategies that we that we uh, we come up with. How? What does that do? Is like one of the first. <laughs> you can mark those things. It's not at all obvious what those things should do. There's a few different interpretations, at least. And so here's where I landed on them. Um, if you set the pro the root provider strategy to none. It's simple, no commands result in a provide. That's the easiest one. Just like no matter what you do, you're not gonna provide anything. 
for roots, you have these sort of group oriented um, uh, provides, you know, you're going to add a whole tree, pin a whole tree, get a whole tree, whatever it happens to be. In that situation, roots is only going to provide roots. I think this is another, you know, this is obvious. Um, and it pr provides nodes in all other contexts. So what this doesn't do is it doesn't prevent providing of like DAG put and that kind of thing. Um, all similarly, uh, for the group related ones, we are, you're either going to add the root or you're going to add everything or you're going to add every fifth or you're going to come up with some probabilistic strategy for doing that. Um, it'll do that when you're doing, um, um, or I mean, I guess it, strict, uh, stick to all. It'll do the all in the case of the group um, providing. Otherwise, it's going to provide everywhere else still, right? So basically, the gist is other than none. and it's unclear how it's going to work with the, the fancy strategies, but other than none, all of your individual um, all of your individual interactions are going to be put. Doesn't have to be this way. This is just like me trying to like think of what makes the most sense from the end user when they enter like that configuration. Uh, the reality is that it maybe there needs to be more, and maybe it needs to be more robust. It's just again, it's a it's a sort of thing that seems like it would be a simple thing, but there's something to figure out here. Um, so yeah, then et cetera needs to be figured out. What's up, Adin? So is, is all the same thing effectively as empty string? Um, y yeah, all is what happens right now. Like in, all is, yeah, regular yeah, stuff. All is just like whatever, whatever, if you were to like use master right now, it would be using all by default, you know? Um, so I think if you want empty string to be all, I think that would make a lot of sense. And do we still need confidence to be able to like remove this is all still like it's is it we don't have enough confidence yet to remove the other stuff and just replace the default with all is that is that where we're at yeah it's just getting all those details okay. figured just, out. yeah um there, so you can look back. I won't get into it because we're like sh we're short on time. We're actually at the end. Do you guys have a few more minutes? Is that okay? Great, great. Um, in those early PRs, Adine, you can see I actually go way further with a feature. It's like I really thought I was going to have something like that mergeable, and you can sort of read through the discussion and see how how that got peeled back. But um, but the intent was, yeah, let's um. um Let's provide all and then just swap the systems out. It just ended up not working that way. Hannah, what you got? Um, yeah, so sorry, I have to go uh, shortly to go to the, my team stand up. But um, one, I mean, honestly, <clears throat> the question for me is, uh, you, so this is like this incredibly hard problem, which you have managed to make uh, some progress on, which is kind of amazing because um, it seems like there have been many people who have taken attempts at it. Um, uh, and we actually have code merged, but we don't have we we haven't gotten to the point where we have enough code merged to drop the other systems. Um, which means that we're in this place where we have like four different system, four different things in there. Um, I think that's my total count. Um, and so my question is really just who's picking this up? Um, and because it seems like 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 you know, yes, we are we've learned a lot in this meeting. Um, and this isn't necessarily a question for you, I guess, um, but like who or who is like being delegated to work on this? Because I feel like if there's not a delegated person to keep pushing this forward, it's going to languish and then we're not going to move. We're not going to ever get to the simpler point. One, one note I'll make that may make that a little bit easier is that I'll, I'm not going to drop off the internet tomorrow. So I'll, I'll keep watching all of this stuff. Like I'll have my like Octobox open and um, my, my ability to like sync, sync time into it is obviously limited, but I am, I'm super more than happy to like talk about things, reflect on things, like figure out where my mind was or whatever. I mean, I'll, I'll do my best to document it, it all. Um, but yeah, for whoever picks it up, and if it's someone that's not in this room, just um, I would like the message to be to be known that I I am I'm available and I'd like to I'd like to uh, I'd like to 
yeah, in what way I can be a part of this thing moving forward, so. Yeah, sorry, yeah. just to be clear, this that was not an ask for you to time sync. It's more to figure out who is going to time sync. Oh yeah, no, totally, I got it. I, to, I yeah, totally yeah. got it. I, just, I, I was just saying, in addition to that, while making that decision, just know, you know what I sure. mean? Just know for Molly or whoever, just know that I'm, I'm, a, I'm there for those answers. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate that. Yeah, and I think our, our top level position is like, we, there isn't someone given given our constrained nature to um, to pick it up right now, um, which is why we're trying to do such a, a big approach at documenting and specifying kind of how how things are at, so it's easy to to onboard on um, sometime in the future. Hopefully, a lot of the testing work that is happening right now is going to be super relevant for also making this more um, just easier to reason about. I mean, it's like, well, you know you can dive deeper into these things without kind of having some of the, the frustrations that Michael was describing at the beginning of um, not being able to get observability of, of what was happening in the system. But there's definitely some pieces that I think um, will land to make some of this easier to work on in the future. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at. Yeah. And I, I know you weren't mentioning this specifically, but just since you said the word testing and I forgot to mention it, I do have unit tests and Sharnet tests for, all of the stuff that is um, that's here. Um, anyone want to stick around while I go through the rest of this little bit? It's maybe not terribly important. It's all written down. I mean, you can read it. The, the main thing I wanted to point out is that I have this list of to do's that are like for me, the high level to do's and the, the things there's an MFS note that I wanted to make, which is that M like I went digging around in MFS and MFS just eventually uses the DAG service and that's how the providing is happening. So that DAG service is not going to do provides for MFS anymore. And so somewhere in M MFS, someone's going to have to interact with a provider system of some kind um, to say uh, can I ask you about that for a second. That's yes. So you're saying that the DAG service does providing. The DAG service doesn't itself do providing, but the like long chain of interactions after you do something in the DAG service causes um, causes a thing to be surfaced to bit swap that will eventually be uh, that will eventually result in a provide. It's try to follow the logic. It's not. <laughs> it's to, not to, the. To be specific, you add a block to the DAG service, and then it gets added to the block service. Then the block service. Uh, puts the block in the data store and at the same time tells BitSwap that we have the block. And then when we call has the BitSwap, BitSwap uh, then finds anyone who's currently asked for the block, gives it to them, and announces to the network that we have the block using the provider system. That's one of the reasons we're trying to make the system a little simpler. Okay, yeah, I remember that. Thank you. Yeah, so that's it. I mean, um, the, the to do's, the thing I would say is, uh, there's a lot of stuff unchecked here, but actually, if you look back at the prior epics, everything except for anything that has three asterisks, I don't have code for. Um, like for the fancy providing stuff, like, uh, I mean, uh, Steven, you're in the room, you're gonna have more info, but the only person I saw that had like anything concrete looking like was Kuba. Um, and I know he's I know he's working on some stuff, but um, but I think that, getting that work that he did out in some format would be really good. So I think there may even be some, some, I'm not ready to use code, but something like some model to think about, but otherwise all of these other things, like you, some of it, like these like commands, you can basically copy paste from like other PRs. It's just, we just learned things and stepped away from a PR to do a simpler thing that we, we knew was going to, we knew was going to work. And so all of this work exists somewhere. Um, but a lot has changed, so you're going to need to like tweak it to make it work. Sorry, Stephen, what's up? Uh, is there any way we could link to the PRs or like the sections of the code? Because like it can be hard to like go through. A hundred percent. So I was yeah I was saying earlier that I, I still have a day and a half, and, I, and there's a few things I just haven't got to. I was I was I was sick most of last week. Um, one of those things that I called out specifically is I will get links to these things because yeah it's it's um even for me i've done the work it's just been so long i have to i have to i have to go digging i have to go digging around myself so yeah i'll do that and i think they're gonna look different you know the systems change we learn new things but they're gonna they're like prior art that'll that'll get the the things flowing and steven I don't know, 
good work on the interfaces, and that's always, for me, at least the hardest part to get right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping the interfaces should allow. I'm, I'm making a few changes for the prioritization and for the strategies, which um, um, which there won't be enough time to like go back and forth on, but hey, you'll have at least one. <laughs> you'll at least have an idea. Um, on that note, though, I did mention earlier, and I'm going to say it explicitly to you too, Stevens. I know you're dealing with a lot of ghost stuff. I'm not disappearing. Ping me on things. Feel free. Like I, you know, my response may be delayed because of like meetings or something like that. But I, I'm, I, I'd love to, um, I'd love to be around for those things as they come up. I'd hate for you guys to like have to relearn something I learned because I didn't write it down well enough. Thank you. That's so. much appreciated. Uh, but we're not going to hold you responsible for responding. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. But it's there. yes, that's much appreciated. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and my my other note was that I think that I think it's a big enough problem that I, maybe everyone is experiencing this. Everyone's like everyone at PL is on a big problem that really is suited for more than one person, but they're like the person working on it. I I felt that like a number of times, sort of like going through this, that um, um, you know there was just there was other people that were needed that would have really would have really helped out a ton. So if there, I know saying more people, it's not the time right now to say more people because I know that, that priorities have been shifting a little, a little bit, but, uh, um, but yeah, that's it. And this isn't it. And this isn't the last conversation. So just, just if, if you have more things, reach out to me directly. I'm around for a few more days. So good. Thank you very much. This is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you all. It's been great working with you guys. I look, uh, look forward to, to trying to do that some more. Take care. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Dominic.